Talk pause. Minus 34 point speech off. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Get off this comfortable couch. Ugh. Right. Finally get out of bed. Ugh. And stretch up a bit. Oh, God. Now I have to do a lot of fucking cleaning. Now I don't like it. Oh, God. I have to really clean up. I have to really clean. So. I'll be doing a lot of gas bagging, so yeah, bear with me while I chit chat on and on and on. Um, so next week I will be going out. Well, actually, oh, that reminds me. I don't have money until the 16th of July. So, yeah. Don't know what I'm going to do when I go out, but I can't spend a lot of money apart from buying milk and a couple of veggies to go for dinner when I eat dinner, you know? <coughs> Which kind of pisses me off to think that that's all I can manage because, well, even if I wasn't <coughs> going to spend 180 bucks at the eye doctor, I'd still like to think that maybe I could buy coffee when I go out or something like that. But it's quite obvious that isn't going to happen. Very obvious, in fact. Very obvious that I won't be buying any coffee. Um, which kind of really... really just pisses me off, <laughs> to be honest, because I'm like, oh, you know, I can go out and get what I need to take home, but what I can't even sit down just to make a cup, I mean just to drink a cup of coffee while I have a break for two hours, not having to do anything, but no, I have to go out, get what I need, and then literally come home. I can't just sit around and have a good feed or anything like that. Which, yeah, I don't really like that, but, you know, just how things are. My hair as well. I don't know. I hope my hair is okay, but seems a bit, seems a little bit off. You know, like it's always getting knots in it now, and it's always getting knotted up, and I'm having to brush all the knots out and I haven't been able to put my hair up for two days because I've had to like brush it a little bit and then the next day I have to brush it a bit more and the next day I have to brush it a little bit more and the next day and the next day and so forth without actually putting it up into a bun or like for me it's a ponytail because my hair just isn't functioning and I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know if I need to have my hair cut off, you know, if I need my hair to be all taken off. I don't know what needs to happen to my hair, but something's not right with it. It's taken me nearly three days without putting my hair up in a ponytail to get all the knots out. Wow. Well, all the knots are nearly out. Okay. It's taken long enough to do. It takes me forever to brush my hair now. I'm thinking about just getting my hair cut off. You're like really short. thing that people do and I keep thinking of it but I never seem to remember it 
Some people who get knotted hair so easily brush their hair, put it in a ponytail during the day, and then at night they'll brush their hair before bed and put it up to go to sleep. So they'll never leave their hair out. They'll keep it in like a hair style all day and all night because then the next day they can get their hair bun or braid or ponytail out and just brush their hair without too many knots appearing in it. Now I could start doing that too, I could, but then I just never think of any of that. I just never think of it. Just doesn't really occur to me to do that. Even if I could, it just doesn't really occur to me that I could do that. Oh well. I guess that's just how it is. So that's the container. It can be put away. I'm just gonna quickly put everything away while I chit chat over and over. Okay, that board has to be put away. Those containers have to be put away too. They're wet. I can't put them anywhere because there's nowhere to actually put them. I'm just going to put them in the cupboard open like that. There. Okay. Let that dry off. Leave it open and put it in the cupboard is all I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to do is leave it open. Leave the containers open. Put some containers up here. Some containers will bloody sit. Where's where I put the fucking thing? And that little thing is going to dry off. Two cups, oh my god. Oh my god, nearly dropped two cups. Nearly almost did something bad. Oh dear. Fuck me. I'm gonna have a great big mug of coffee this morning. A great big mug. today. Huge one. I've just got to put things away and <sighs> there we go. Just got to put everything away and wash those dishes. Wash all of them dishes and put the blade. Oh, that's a pretty sharp blade. Um, and sit in there for now because that container is not washed. Sit in there. Okay, now I'm going to clean up here the old way, which is to get the sink ready without filling it up, and uh, then put some dishwashing detergent on the cloth and start washing.
which is my one of my options for washing dishes when I can't fill up the sink for whatever stupid reason. The other thing that's really starting to get me, and it's just because of things that I'm a bit concerned about, not that I am concerned, the way some of the people act around here. Yeah, a lot of people have problems, I'm sure everybody has problems, but some people are just never taught how to handle problems. And when I say that, I'm not expecting that people must cope, because I don't cope with everything either. And I don't cope with everything. I just don't. I'm not someone who copes with every single little problem. But people who outright lie to me and tell me how they wouldn't hurt a fly, and yet something tells them to hurt or kill someone, well... If they couldn't hurt a fly, why are they let, why are they, if they couldn't hurt a fly, how come they're letting something tell, well not letting, as much as why are they allowing something or someone or whatever they hear to tell them to hurt somebody, when if they couldn't hurt a fly, or if they weren't violent at all, they would be able to say no to their brain. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to harm someone. That's not how I do things. Like, to me, if you tell me I'm not a violent person, and then your brain tells you to harm someone, so you do harm someone, that tells me that you are a violent person, because... If you weren't violent, you wouldn't even be responding to your brain. You'd be saying, no, I'm not hurting that person. No, I'm not doing anything to harm other people. That isn't what I want to do. You'd be doing your best not to harm people. You wouldn't be sitting there going, fuck, I've just done something wrong and it's out of character for me to do that but I'm not a violent person, why did I do something violent when it's not part of my character? Well, the reality is, it is part of your character to do something violent because violent people do violent things. It's not something that is negotiable. It's how real life is. Violent people do violent things. And when they say, oh, but it's not part of my character. It's like, well, it is part of your character because you're doing violent things. And I have to talk to someone about that next week because I'm not happy. I'm actually a little bit concerned. Violent, they wouldn't be acting violently. 
And the person makes a lot of excuses. See, I don't trust the neighbours. They're very dangerous. Very dangerous people. Because, like, they don't know their own strength. The person who lives near me thinks, oh, I'm too small, I'm too short. I can't do anything violent because I'm too small. Little kids are violent people. Little kids do violent things. How can a grown woman think that she can't do something violent when she's little? Little people can be very violent. understand how to trust people who don't even understand their own strength. It's very hard to trust people who don't know their own strength and who don't understand their own ability to do something bad. You know, why do not trust people like that? People who think, oh, I can't do something bad because I'm too little, I'm too nice. Like, no, they're not, and they don't understand why they're not too nice or too short or too friendly. They're more like jumped on top of nice, and yet people do not understand themselves. I do not understand how some people can't understand themselves. worried about this neighbour. You know, when she says things about, oh, I'm too little to do anything wrong, it's like, no, you're not. You're not too small to do anything wrong. You've got the capacity to do violence at any time. And people who say, oh, I don't have it in me to be violent, are always violent people. And I know that from experience. I know people too well. I know what people are like. The people who say I'm not a violent person and it's not in my nature, they're the ones who are the most dangerous to deal with. They're very dangerous, you know. I know it's hard to accept when you don't understand but when you've lived around that shit for ages, you know what people are like and you're just like, look, can you just be quiet? Just leave me alone. I don't trust you. You don't know what's in your nature and what's not in your nature. Because, yeah, you might know yourself, but when you're someone who says that you're someone who you're not, like your behaviour contradicts what you're saying. So if you say you're not a violent person, but you are then clearly you're someone who doesn't know themselves as much as they thought. And I don't trust those sorts of people. I do not trust you if you don't know yourself. I trust people who understand themselves. I always trust people who understand themselves, but I'm never going to trust someone who does not know who they are as a person. I can never trust someone like that. Never. It's just not in me to do that. I've got no reason to trust people who are like that. Absolutely none. I do not have it in me to trust people who are so like, so, um, just don't know who, who they are as people. I can't trust anyone like that. 
Never have been able to. Never ever been able to trust people who do not know themselves. I can only trust people who can understand themselves, let alone anyone else. I just don't have it in me to trust psychiatric people when they think, oh, I know who I am, I know myself better than anyone else, and yet they behave dangerously and say, oh, that's out of character. It's not out of character. If they're behaving dangerously, that's because they're dangerous people. It's not out of character. I know lots of people living in these units who are very fucking dangerous. Very dangerous. like that. And to an extent, I don't know much about psychiatric health. I don't know much. I just go to a psychologist because I'm terrified. I get anxious about a lot of things and I get over it. I have periods of feeling okay and periods of feeling anxious and sometimes terrified. And when I get over it, oh, I'm okay again for maybe a few hours, maybe a few days, maybe a couple of weeks and it comes back out. Okay. So, she's helping me understand a few things which I need to know, which is fair enough. But at the same time, I just can't understand how people say, oh, it's out of character for me to do this, it's out of character for me. I don't believe that people's behaviour is out of character. I think people do things and make excuses. You know, like if I hit someone in the face, I could go to court and say, sorry, it was out of character for me to hit someone. I was on my period and I never hit anybody. And today I did. I'm sorry, it's just something I did because I can't really control myself today. Usually I don't do those things. It's like, yeah, but... <laughs> Maybe I do, I don't know. Maybe that's what I'm like, you know? I'm not trying to say that everybody is suddenly not mentally ill because I'm sure there are lots of mentally ill people around. But I can't really understand this whole idea of I behaved in a certain way that's out of character because it's not out of character. It is not out of character. And I think this is why some people in the units get kicked out because they reckon that, oh, they move out, they need another place to live and that. But I think that most of the time it's more that people are kicked out. People don't, do, like, some people do just move out but a lot of people are kicked out of these units because how they behave and they make excuses like, oh, I'm psychiatric, I have mental health problems and I'm violent because of this and that, but I'm not usually a violent person. It's like, oh, I don't think so. And that's why you've been kicked out, because you're a violent person. You can't have violent people living in these units here, sorry. <laughs> you know. And then somebody living next door to me is concerned about getting a breach. And I'm like, why are you concerned about getting a breach? What's bothering you about that? You know, what bothers you about getting a breach notice? You know? Why do I need to hear about you getting a breach notice? You know? Why do I need to hear it?
Okay. Now, why do I need to hear about breach notice for? If you're concerned about getting a breach, you're probably doing something wrong. That or you're just terrified why you're living here if you're so scared of the property manager. You know, like, you don't really think about these things before you go freaking out. Because, to be honest, sometimes things happen that you've got to realise that if you don't like what's going on, leave. You know, if you don't like how you're living here, get out and move somewhere else and live somewhere. And actually, it's not safe living in, in this unit anyway, not that I'm going into detail, but, you know, I've heard people say, oh, it's safe living here, it's safe, it's safe, it's like it isn't safe, but anyway, I'm not going to go into any arguments about that. I won't argue about that. It's not entirely safe. Anyway, I'm not going to argue about that. I'm just going to take what people say with a grain of salt. The only safe locations are like secure buildings with activated alarms, like say the Guide Dogs Queensland Centre. Now they're pretty safe. They're pretty safe. Then you've got secure locations with housing permission, which is pretty safe because you've got to have a key code to get in. You can't just get in without like a special PIN number. So it's pretty safe. You know, it's not so dangerous to live there. But yeah, when it comes down to anything else, yeah, look out, you know, look out. Because honestly, you don't really want to deal with any of that shit. You know, it's not entirely safe living here. And I've known that for years. You know, I've known that for many years. I've known that for very many years. safe living at those units. You know, it's just not, I wouldn't want to lie to you and say otherwise, but I'm living here because I happen to like my location, I can like my particular unit, so I'm living here. Otherwise, I'm like, yeah, right, get out and get a new place to live in if you don't like it here. Because it's not as safe as what everyone reckons it is. It's not all that safe. It is not. You know, it's just how it is. It's not something that you sit there and think about like, you know, like looking at a pretty little road or something. Some unit complexes are not safe to be living in. Like it or not, they are not safe. And it's just how people need to accept it because it's reality. And reality speaks sometimes. It's just what happens. You can't avoid it, it just happens.
So yeah, I'm not going to go into any extra details that aren't really necessary, but for you that's a model tile that's actually in, they're not. Um, you go ask everyone else who lives here, they're not, you know, the pretty utopian society that everybody is expecting it to be. Um, it is just how things are. If you want to rent in a unit properly, property, don't expect it always to be 100% secure, 100% safe, because it's not. It's just how it is. So, um, I'm quite happy with how life is in general. Um, I'd be happier if I did have a new life situation, but at the moment it's not happening like that because it's not, I'm not ready for any massive change yet. So, I'm just going to live with what I got. I've got everything I need for cooking and everything I need for life skills here. So that's what I'm happy with so far. I don't need extra tips at the moment. This is just how life happens to be. And I'm not going to change that for nothing. I'm not going to change that for anybody. You know, I'm quite happy with my current situation. So, I'm not going to change it. to change it, I'm not going to change it, and I'm not about to sit there and pretend that uh, I need to do this and I need to do that, and really, I don't need to do anything, oh no, hang on, is not right here. Hang on. Put that up there. Yeah, put that there. Okay. Put that there. so far with my living arrangements so far. I'm not happy with somebody because of how they treat people. I can't talk about that at the moment because it's not the right situation for me to talk about that. But I'm not happy with how somebody treats everybody. The way he or she or they, because I can't say. The way they happen to treat people, but anyway, um, something will be getting sorted out with that, but at the moment, I'm just going to leave things the way they are, 
until otherwise necessary. So, um, besides that, I do not trust the most, and I say most, because some people are lovely, but I do not trust most people here. I cannot trust and will not trust most people living here. Some people, yes. Most people, no. I have no trust for most people. Um, if you're listening, Stephanie, I have got a hundred reasons for why I could easily disappear right now. But the reason I'm not is because I'm saving up a budget first. That way when I do leave, I'm not stressed. I'm not going to be stressed. So yeah, I will be staying here for as long as I need to stay, but I'm not going to go beyond my limits, is all I'm going to say, just like that. I will not be going into any further details. relationship to other people around here. No, I've decided that it's best if I just don't associate with anybody, do not mix with anybody, do not speak to anyone unless it's just like, oh, hello, how are you going? And if I have to have a coffee, to, you know, with company, because I love having coffee, you know, when I'm socialising, then I need to be darn sure. that I'm having coffee with someone who I'm sure I won't get into a fight with or who I can get along with reasonably well. Otherwise, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I
what I will be doing though is making sure that if people say anything to me that they know is that I know is not true, I'm just going to say yeah, whatever, or um, oh, okay, that's how you feel, okay. Because I know that most of the time when people say things that aren't even true, they're looking for an argument. You know, people can say things like, um, oh, I think so and so about this person or whatever they think, and I'm like, well, okay, whatever. Who if I say no, that's not true? Oh yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. So I won't be talking about situations as much as I'll just be. So no, I can then. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's how you think. That's what you believe. Right? Because people are going to say no. That's not what I believe. It's what's really happening. And it's not happening. It's just what people think in their heads. So that's what I need to say. Oh, okay. All right. Well, see how you go then. Because I know for a fact that people are just saying shit like that just to try and get an argument going. It's just, that's all it is. It's just to start up an argument. That's all it is. You know, there's nothing normal about the way most people are around this place. Most people are very abnormal. Most people are very weird. Most people are very out of touch with reality. Most people do not have a clue what normal, real life normally is. Most people don't know jack squat about reality. Most people don't know jack squat. So, whatever people say, I can say, oh, okay then, all right. Because it's not even true anyway. Most people are very abnormal around here. I don't mix with abnormal people. Yeah, some people have problems. Okay, everyone does. But some people truly think abnormal things that no sane person, no normal average Joe Bloggs thinks. Only crazy nutcases think the way they do around here. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yep, whatever. Because that's all it is. Bullshit. Drama. Crazy shit. Too many crazies around this, this unit complex. Stephanie, if you are listening, you might have got my list by now without me saying anything about what I think and what I would like to be doing. But that's my opinion, or that actually, no, that's how I feel right now. That is just how I feel at the moment. It's truly, honestly, how I feel. So now I'm going to make a great big cup of, oh, no, I need to transfer these containers away. Just to get rid of them. Okay. Let's spread that out a bit. Oh, the phone's wet. Oh, okay. It's a bit... The phone's wet. What happened? Oh, no. The phone's wet. The phone is extremely wet. I'm going to go and turn this jug on. Pause. Stop. Call. Line of knife. St- file list. Button. Stereo. M4. Speech off. still working. I need to um, turn the jug on and start boiling it. And get a nice yummy bricky going. Yum. Okay. Right. Great big cup of 
coffee. And a massive great big one. So like, don't get me wrong, maybe people are genuinely just, they don't know what they're doing, so whatever happens, happens. But, yeah, I, I'm a bit suspicious. I don't have much trust. anyone around this guilt. That's all I'm going to say. I don't have a reason to trust people around this joint. I don't even show any trust. And I do not have to trust people. It is how it is. I do not have to trust people in the joint. I do not have to do it. Alright, so situations can go bad anywhere but here you just put into a situation that you know isn't your way of living it's not 
what you would usually want in your life. It's not your character to be in such a situation. It's more like I'm living here because I need to live here, but as soon as I can, can do so, I'll be changing a few circumstances which I'm not going into. I will not go into, in fact, until I'm sure that I can talk without being snitched on by the very people I can't stand anyway. to live here. No, I'm not grateful to the people who caused trouble for me in the first place. So anyways, I'm staying here for now because I can and I happen to like my particular spot. So that's how it is for now. Anyway, that's neither here nor there today, at least. I'm a little bit like, don't worry about something that's not happening until it happens. But then you've got to be prepared for what might happen just in case. But all I'm going to do with that is just keep on being prepared without actually thinking that something's going to go wrong. And then if something really happens, then I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm ready to leave anyway. I'm all ready to go, so who cares? I won't be stranded. But if nothing ever happens, then I'll never have to be ready to leave, to get out of here, to move out. I'll never have to be ready to leave. Even if I'm ready to go, I won't actually have to um, execute those plans. Won't have to. Am I happy about that? <laughs> you know, it's just... Awesome. What am I going to have for brekkie today? Yes. That needs to go in the bin. That is old shit. It has to go in the bin. is on toast. Anyway, I'll get the bread out. And when it's ready soon, I'll get the butter out for a few minutes. It is super soft. So, the good news about having super soft butter is unlike the hard stick of butter, which you need to leave out for 20 minutes to maybe half an hour, 30 minutes. <coughs> you just have to leave that out for five to ten minutes you know put it on the bench 
get your plate and butter knife out and get the other stuff that you want out and cut up your fruit and all that. And that's it. And when you're finally ready to actually make your sandwich, the butter's been sitting out for probably 10 minutes maybe, depending on what you're getting ready in the kitchen before you actually start doing it. You put the butter on the bench and then it's warming up a little bit from being in the fridge. So it goes from being really hard to spread to just being soft and spreadable, super soft like it's meant to be. So first I'll be putting the butter on the bench and then putting other stuff, you know, putting <coughs> toast in and all this other shit that I need to do. So yeah, <coughs> that's me. That is me. Speech report. Stop. Stop. That is Button. me. That Stop. is me.